Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Daniel Umstead, host of the RNG Radio Show. And today's guest that I have with me is the best lyrical artist. Like, you just want to stop listening to hip hop alone because his genre of his style, his flow, his musical talent, I mean, he is a gift to hip hop and rap music alone. So, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce my guest to the RNG Radio Show, Wendell, aka WG Wavy. Wendell, how you doing today, brother? I'm good, brother. How you feeling, man? I'm I'm hype. I'm hype now that you're on. I'm I'm hearing the music. I'm loving the music. Uh, tell me first off, so people can just stop what they're doing because I know they're curious. Where can folks actually find you at so they can listen to your music right now? Um, if you want to listen to me, you can find me on all platforms, SoundCloud include, included, YouTube, everything under W G Wavy, W G W A V V Y. So you know when you look it up, it might. Like if you look me up on Google, it, some some weird hair thing might pop up. But my panel always pops up right under it. I'm gonna end up getting that fixed eventually when they realize who I am. You know what I'm saying? So I got you. Yeah. But you look me up, everything's gonna pop up. All my uh, social media and everything should be right under the panel. And the G is capitalized, so it's W capital W capital G capital W then A V B Y. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Now. Uh, with music, because I know a lot of artists, you know, they work on a craft, life gets involved, and then they go back to their craft. Uh, what actually got you initially started and in wanting to get your voice out there into this industry? Um, well, I, my dad, okay, so I grew up in Northeast Philly, and we, I was in and out of Philly and Jersey a lot. So growing up, my dad used to play a lot of Akon, Young G's, and 50 Cent. So that's all I pretty much heard, like them. And then I'm African too. So hearing African music and then hearing like what the hip, like the industry had to offer, I was just like, if I were to combine these things, what could I do for the world? So mm -hmm. when I was younger, my dad always used to drop me off to my cousin's crib and we just used to kick it. And like around his crib, there was a whole bunch of older dudes. So like I used to go around them and I just used to start freestyling. And they was like, oh, this kid got talent. And I was like, what is talent? I just know how to, you know what I'm saying? I'm like six, seven years old, just rapping verses, like words coming to my head, I'm just saying stuff. So by the time I was like 14, I had moved out of uh, Jersey because we had moved to Jersey. My mom got married, she moved to Jersey. And then after she had my little brother, something happened on the street we was on. And my stepdad was just like, I don't want to deal with this. So we moved to Ohio. And when I moved to Ohio, I told myself, I was like, I'm not about to keep freestyling. Like somebody's going to hear what I got to say. So when I moved to Ohio, I got enrolled into this little charter school. When I went to this charter school, the first thing I did was I, I made sure I was in all music-related classes or, like, all media classes where I could use different elements of the industry and learn and then take that. Once I, once I learned, I take it and, like, you know what I'm saying, put it towards my music career. So I met this one lady. Her name was Tista. Uh, she pretty much told me, like, yo, I have a media class. I'm going to teach you how to shoot videos and all that shit. So I found out she rapped, too. So... I told her, like, I don't know what happened. The topic came up, and I was like, oh, I make music, and I want to get in the studio. She's like, you want to get in the studio? I was like, yeah. So, like, one day she picked me up from my aunt's crib. It was, like, around Christmas time of 2015. She took me to the studio. Once I hopped in the studio, I never left. I was in the studio for three weeks straight every day. When I went to school, I got out of school. I went to the studio, straight to the studio. I was in the studio so much that my mom already knew, like, all right, you gonna be in the studio from what time today? All right, cool. I expect you home by this time. If I wasn't home by this time, she either thought I was like running late or I was just still in the studio. So like, I got tired of going to the studio. I had a friend, his name was Trayvon. He wanted to hop in the booth. So we started a little rap group and then we fell off because I guess he thought I was trying to outshine him, but I was just trying to grind, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was just that. So I was like, nah, I saw love, bro. I ain't trying you for me. Eat more than you. We all gotta eat together. So. Eventually, we parted ways. When we parted ways, I was like, you know what? I'm going to learn how to do this myself. So by the time I was 16 in 2017, I, uh, I ended up, like, getting a laptop. My uncle had sent me my studio equipment for my birthday, and I had to learn how to record. So once I taught myself how to record, I was like, all right, it's nonstop. So since 2017, i just been on, a, like, a straight path of, like, I'm going to do everything myself. So I just started recording everything. I was like, all right, I'm going to study this and study that. So I started, like, going deep back into hip-hop, like, where it first started, like, African Bombada days. Like, I was like, I'm going to learn everything. I learned the basics of hip-hop. I learned where it came from. Like, all right, cool. So this is what I got to do. I took different elements, and I, since then, I just been on the road. Like, I was like, if I ain't one of the greatest, shit, they going to know my name before I die. So I had to, 
you know what I'm saying? It's took everything that I, I, I seen while going through the journey, you know what I'm saying? And then I just, I just dove straight in it. Then I ended up joining the military. It opened up many doors for me with networking because now I know people that know people. So because of that, you know what I'm saying? When I go places and people be like, let's see what this kid's got. And I show them my catalog. They're like, dude, ain't no reason why you should be in the military. You need to be out here grinding. I'm like, yeah, but I'm gonna wait till my time come. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to rush you. Take my time. Got you, got you. That is uh, truly incredible. I mean, for uh, starting out, because I mean, we're in the year 2020. So hearing about this since 2017, as far as what you went through, uh, I mean, I think you cover like two family generations, you know, being in the military, uh, spending the time in the studio. I don't even know those folks. Um, and not to hate, uh, sorry, my fellow Facebook friends that are trying to get into the industry, but the grind that you actually put in, uh, Wendell, uh, compared to the ones that I know of, uh, doesn't equate, D doesn't equate at all. You know, you never hear an artist, well, I have heard of artists, you know, up there, but never somebody that's starting off on the ground, you know, going three weeks straight, uh, being in the studio. Now, I know that you mentioned uh, some of the past artists, but who do you look at, you know, and I know you mentioned African Barbada and started from the beginning, but when you're stuck on a song or when you're stuck trying to write something out, who do you look towards as far as inspiration? Like, ah, let me listen to this so I can um, get some flow together. Um, well, my inspirations, like I, I know one of my songs, my top three, uh, I go Biggie Smalls for sure. Uh, if I'm if I'm looking, it depends. Like if I'm looking for punchlines and I'm trying to stay like the, the, the pop star that I want to be like, boom, I'll be like, all right, so I'm gonna listen to Biggie. I'm gonna listen to Drake, maybe Chris Brown or Roddy Rich. Like, it, it just depends on the vibe I'm trying to give off. Like, if I have a beat and I'm like, okay, so if I was this artist, how would I want to attack this? How would I give the audience, like, something to hang on to? Like, would I, would I hit them with a punchline or would I, would I start getting melodic? And I, would, I, would I draw them in closer? Like, would I say certain things or would I just stop and be a comedian on the song and say something? So when, so when somebody hears the song, they're like, oh, yeah, this is one part in the song. So it honestly just depends on, like, how I want to, like, construct a song because sometimes if I'm stuck I'll call one of my like my older friends like yo bro I need you to help me with this because I don't know what to do this is what I got so far they'll hear it they'll be like all right well maybe you should try switching the flow up if you can't do that then you know what I'm saying rest on it sleep on it start another song or just think maybe just just think of something the more the less you do the probably the better it'll be instead of you trying to come hard so honestly I just look at I look at Biggie shoot my friends Drake, Roddy Rich, Chris Brown. And then I also think about what's trending because if I if I get stuck on the song and I'm like, okay, well, I gotta look at who's popping right now. What would Roddy Rich do right now? Okay. If he when I, I when I listen to the box and he's like, bitch, don't wear no shoes in my house, I'm like, okay, cool. So then I'ma say something that when people hear this song, they're always gonna remember. They're gonna remember that one line. So if I if I can get that one line in this song, I'ma do it. If it don't fit. Then I'm scratched and I'm gonna start over again. I'm like, I'm gonna think of something else. And then if I can't, if I'm stuck, I just leave it alone. <laughs> or I, I just like bring the hook back in and send it to somebody else, like hop on this because I don't know what else to do. Boom. Got you, got you. Now, um, the other thing that I want to uh, ask you and inquire about um, you and I both know as far as uh, being black men and uh, with the uh, racial injustice and those who are trying to fight the racial injustice. Uh, mm -hmm. with your music uh, being impacted in this world and starting to grow in this world, how have you felt, you know, th throughout this, you know, uh, being a black man, uh, trying to get your word out in the industry, and then, you know, you just have people looking at you because of the color of your skin, like, oh, here comes another rapper that's talking about money cash shows, and it's so much more than that, you know, when people actually listen to your music. So, for you, um, how have you been able to combat that? And how have you been able to honestly, you know, being a black man such as myself uh, and yourself, how have you been able to keep like a positive image uh, for others? Um, so when I try to like, when I make music, I try to tell everybody around me, like when I, 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 look, I look at everything. So what inspires me is pretty much what I've been through, what I'm doing, what I know somebody went through or what I see is happening in the world. So. Me being me, like, even in high school, I was always the first person to say something on when it came to Black Lives Matter. Like, I didn't, I didn't care what was happening. I'd say something. Like, if I felt as if that person needed justice, I would go in front of the whole school, write a whole rap poem about it, and I would express myself, and the whole school would go crazy. But, like, my, to, like the way I tried to, like, handle it is, like, 
I don't want people to look at me and be like, you know, oh, here comes another black rapper rapping about this. So I try to keep it as my, my image is like as clean as possible because I know if I were to get pulled over by a cop, because it's happened before, like I got pulled over by a cop and the cop's like, oh, you're from this state? Oh, okay, okay, okay. If you was from another state, then I would have I got aggressive. And I'm just like, what do you mean? You know what I'm saying? Like, so I try to keep my attitude as positive as possible. Because what's funny is my dad's a cop. So like when I go around my dad, like he's a sheriff. So when I go around him and stuff, I realize that like, depending on how much power you have as an officer, it dictates how you move. So because my dad's a sheriff, he can't, a lot of things people will get in trouble for, he can get past that because he's a sheriff. If you were to pull him over, he'd just show you his ID and you'd be like, oh, my apologies, sir. You know what I'm saying? Have a nice day. And he'd be like, yeah, get the fuck on. You know what I'm saying? So right, like, right. So, yeah, so I, I, think it, I think it's stuff like that. Like, okay, well, for me, because if I were to, if I was in my dad's area, automatically, if I was like under his name or if I lived with him, if every time I get pulled over, I'd, I would get away with it. That would be like an easy car because my father's a sheriff. Oh, you know my father, he's a sheriff. Oh, oh, that's your dad, you know what I'm saying? But like, I try to keep my, like my image is clear. So if somebody were to see me on the internet and they see me in person, they're like, oh, you know, he's not like everybody else. He's not like, you know, toting guns everywhere. So he, we wouldn't see him as a threat. That's why I try to tell people like, don't let like what you see in the industry fool you. Because a lot of people only carry those guns and stuff because that's what they're told to do. Like, I don't need to, like, walk around, you know what I'm saying, act all big and bad. Because at the end of the day, I'm not above the law. So when I do see people getting hurt by the police and they're not doing anything, I really get furious because it's like, what if that person, you know what I'm saying, like, what if they was really going through something? And then they already know once you see a cop, it's, it could be your last day. You know, like, I see the videos and I think, like, what if that was me? What would I do? Me being me, I talk a lot. So I'd probably be able to talk myself out of the situation, but depending on the police officer, you know, I'd be scared. Like when I got pulled over the last time and I got a ticket, the first thing I said was, it was four people in the car. I said, y'all better get y'all phones out. Cause if he tell me to get out of this car, I don't know what's going to happen. And the moment he mm -hmm. said, can you please step out of the car? I looked at everybody and was like, y'all better hey, get y'all phones out. Start rolling. Start I told him I was like, start rolling. Cause I don't know what the hell about to happen. And then I went to, I went behind the car. I said, yes, officer. I put my hands behind my back. I, was, I just stood there. He said, where you from? I was like, oh, well, you know, my mom lives in Ohio. He said, like, okay, well, you know, I live in Ohio too. But if you was a Michigan fan, I would have to fuck you up. And I was like, so am I going to get fucked up or what? <laughs> like, right, oh. right. Yeah, so, you know, like, close calls like that and stuff. I just honestly think, like, if people were to, they would have just, like, take a second to, like, understand. Sometimes police, I mean, they do do dumb shit. But I feel as if, if, a, if a person were to think, like, okay, you know what I'm saying, maybe if I just just don't even try to act so scared and just be relaxed and calm. And if they were to attack me, then I react. But instead of, you know what I'm saying, me just coming off aggressive, no officer, I'm not gonna do this, my hands are right here. That, some people take that as disrespect. Not every cop is the same, you know what I'm saying? Like I didn't been in a situation where I was in a passenger seat and the person driving got pulled over. And it was funny because I would like, how when I go out and dress, like how I dress when I go out pretty much, I dress like a rapper, but I keep my, I keep it classy. Like I don't do too much, not a lot of chains. I don't have tattoos. Like I only got one piercing, it's my nose piercing. And back then I didn't even have a piercing. So I was pretty much dressed up like normal, you know what I'm saying? I had my basketball jersey on with some jeans and some kicks, that was it. And I, we got pulled over and the cop pulled the girl over that was driving and he came to my side, he was like, let me see your license or your ID, I said, or what, officer? I didn't do anything. Did you talk to the person right here? Mm-hmm. So he was like, let me see your license. I was like, officer, I didn't do anything. He was like, okay. So I gave him my ID. I gave him my military ID. So when he seen it, he got scared. So he ended up asking the girls, like, does the person in your passenger seat have any criminal record? Is he on the run from something? I'm like, why would you ask that? With, with a military ID. I don't, I don't know if you understand how this lineage works. I think, uh, cause, cause I come from a military background. And so seeing, you know, especially when uh, my mom would take me to work and everything like that, the commander in chief was the president. So my boss's boss's boss is the president of the United States. So if I was trying to run from something, I'm not going to get that far yeah, because of who I'm connected with, whether it be present or in the past. So. That, that that's really just mind blowing, man. Like, wow. Yeah. So, and then like he just kept pressing, like, is he on the run? Is he a fugitive? I'm looking at him like 
I gave you my military ID. I don't even have a fucking parking ticket, no ticket at all. And you want to act like I, I, I almost blew the fucking roof of the car off. Like he was just like, oh, we're just making sure because she was speeding and it looked like you guys were running. So I was like, the speed limit is 70 miles an hour. We was going 75. You had no reason to pull us over, officer. He's like, well, you know, because you look like, I look like what? I look like what? I was just like, man, all right. You know what I'm saying? You're right. I'm wrong. Just give us the ticket. She'll pay the ticket. It is what it is. We, we, like, that day was just crazy. And we was on our way to the zoo. That's the thing. Like, I'm just like, I just want to go see the animal. I'm and you trying to, to say I look like a criminal. Cause I'm, like, it was just crazy. So, like, from that day on, I just noticed, like, all right, well, the way I dress, apparently people perceive me as a criminal. So I was like, okay, let me stop dressing like the way I usually dress. I still got pulled over just because I was black. Like, I was just like, you know what I'm saying? So I honestly think, like, it, no matter how much we change as black people, we're still going to be looked at as hood rats, gangsters, uh, like, just, just like, people that are not, what's the word I'm looking for? Equal, yeah, to, to, to the superior. Like, I, and until, I don't know, until something, like, drastically happens, like, I honestly think if a black cop were to pull over an innocent white man and kill him, the oh. motives would change. Everything would change. This like I really started. Would be in a whole different state of yeah, mind. It wouldn't. It wouldn't be Black Lives Matter. It'd be old white people lives matter or white lives matter. Because even now, like there is a video I just seen. This dude was in a car. A cop told him put his hands up. He said, "Officer, my hands are up." He said, "Okay, well, if you don't get out of this car, I'm gonna fuck you up." He said, "But officer, I'm not resisting arrest. You didn't tell me to get out the car. You keep telling me to." put my hands up and unbuckle my seatbelt and stamped out the night. He was like, well, if you don't get out, I'm gonna count to three. And if you don't, I'm gonna fuck you up. So his man unbuckled the seatbelt and pulled the dude out the car. And I'm just like, no resisting arrest, nothing. You just yanked him out the car. If it was, if it was the other way around, you know, like a white person was doing it. But like, I didn't see white people, like my uncle. And he lives in Minnesota. After this whole George Floyd thing happened, he actually went to go protest. And it was like 10 o'clock at night. He was leaving the protest to go to his car. And the cops surrounded him. Like, they boxed him in with, like, 500 people. There was a white kid that had a pistol in his bag. And he said they seized the bag and checked it and gave it right back to the kid. And he walked away. And they took my uncle into jail. So, like, the whole night, my family was calling my uncle. We could not get him. Like, I'm thinking something went wrong. I'm ready to book a flight to Minnesota. He, he finally called me, like, yo, bro, I got arrested. They pretty much just took me in because... They said we was uh, causing damage, blah, 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 and a whole bunch of other shit. We was out past curfew, and I tried to get to my car. They wouldn't let me. They boxed us into the gas station, started throwing tear gas and shit. I was like, but you didn't do nothing wrong, right? No, I was just standing there. I tried to go to my car, and they wouldn't let me. They brought out the guns. They brought out the SWAT, the dogs, everything. Yeah. So it was just, you know, honestly, yeah. the world is fucked up. It really is fucked up. Gotcha. Well, uh, to, to keep that positive note and to keep that positive light, because um, I definitely know, um, especially from hearing your music, um, I, I know you're going to be one of the biggest pioneers in the industry as far as moving forward. Uh, another question I wanted to ask you, um, as far as uh, where are you going uh, with your music? Like, where do you see yourself either this year or even sometime around this time next year uh, with uh, WG Wavy? Um. Well, my, so my dream, the vision that I see myself, like, cause I'm dreaming high. I'm talking like, I want to be the biggie of my generation with Michael Jackson's star, star fame. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want everybody to know who I am, but like, I don't want to be that dude that's just like untouchable. Like, I want to be able to relate to everybody. Like, I can go to any part of the world and people will love me. You know what I'm saying? Just because like, even though I do make all, like, I can make any type of song, but, like, when I make songs that deliver messages, I want everybody to feel it, you know? Like, I got a song coming out, it's called America, and it's pretty much about the whole Black Lives Matter thing. Like, I, that's just one part. So what I'm going to do is I'm pretty much going to do, like, parts of everything, like, the beginning. I'm going to take out, like, I don't know, from the beginning to the end. I'm going to just tell stories because pe people like when I tell stories. So my plan is to, like, make, a song just like a catchy song something that'll get people's attention and then i'll drop it on world star hip-hop that'll just expose me to the world once that happens then i'll get the i'll get all the traffic to my page and shift the whole culture like i want people to understand like yeah you've seen this image of me but let me show you something else you know what i'm saying so by this time next year if i'm not like because 
I'm, I'm like I work with Reverb Nation behind the scenes and stuff. They, you know, they're pushing my music out there. They're sending me to all different record labels and everything. Like I've actually been in a talk with like record labels from like like uh you know Universal Records, I believe, uh, Sony and all that stuff. They're pretty much telling me what I need to do in order for me to get like a completed deal. They're like, you know, just keep building your fan base, get your numbers up more, and but by this time next year, you should be able to sign a deal. But yeah. I honestly think I don't really want to sign a deal because then that limits me. Because if mm -hmm. I do still, I won't be able to speak for myself. It's you can't do this because in your contract it says you won't talk about certain things. And if you talk about certain things, you violate your contract. Now boom, I'm an unsigned artist. I don't want to do that. You know, I'd rather me do it everything up from the muscle. I get it off my own, you know, and then I go out there, change the world. So that's the plan. This time next year, I should be like my military contract should be halfway over, more than halfway over by this time next year. So when my if my numbers aren't where I want them to be, then I'm staying in the military, keep on networking, you know what I'm saying, keep on investing. And then when I get to where I want to be, poof, I'm gonna leave the military and I'm just grind. You know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna just grind and grind and grind until I'm where I want to be. And then where I, where I, when I pass where I need to be and where I'm what I wanna be, then I'll relax and then I'll start opening doors for everybody that wants to come in. You know what I'm saying? Cause I live by the motto, everybody eats. Everybody like got it. I like that. Pay them full, man. Pay them full. Course, full. Say, everybody eats, B. Everybody eats. My favorite so. <laughs> movie, man. I live by that. Like, oh, man. De definitely time. from the good and the bad. And, uh, you know, for it being a true story. But I, I don't want to get into that because definitely we're going to be here for another 30 minutes to an hour. Yeah, man. Um, <laughs> Real quick, because I definitely want to wrap up here. Uh, what advice can you give to somebody uh, being an entrepreneur or either just getting into the music industry? What advice would you give to the next uh, Biggie Smalls? Or even, I should say, what advice would you give to the next uh, person that's trying to fill your shoes? Um, don't let nobody tell you what you can do. Because if you do, you'll limit yourself. So if you have an idea and you think this shit sounds like a fucking million dollar idea, just do it. Because the worst thing you can do is let somebody tell you you're not good enough. You know what I'm saying? So if you listen to other people's options, like you first, you got to be accept and you got to be able to accept criti uh, criticism. Once you're able to accept criticism, then you're able to grow. Because if you're not able to accept when somebody tells you, hey, this needs to be fixed, you'll never grow as an artist because you'll just, you'll be staggered. You'll just be stuck in the same spot. So always be ready for somebody to not like what you do. And because they don't like what you do, they're always going to keep it 100 because if they do, you listen. So once you listen, like, all right, I don't like the way this nigga use auto-tune too much. Okay, fine. And I just won't use auto-tune. I don't like how this nigga always raps the same. Okay, fine. And I'll sing. I don't like how this nigga sound, all his beats sound the same. Fine. I'll just go acapella then. What the fuck? I'll do anything you said you don't like. I'll go against it just to show you that I can work against anything you throw my way. You know what I'm saying? So if somebody wants to be the next big year, they want to fill my shoes, they first got to understand it takes, it takes years, it takes time. Like, because whether your time is a day, a week, a year, 10 years, 100 years, your time is going to come eventually. Whether it's a little bit of time or it's a long period of time. Like when Drake said, I'm here for a good time, not a long time, I understand exactly what that meant. Because a lot of people, when they look at who they want to be like, they always look at what they see, not what the people do in the background. So you got to look deep into what you want to do. Because, like, Biggie, I don't watch almost every Biggie movie there is. Like, Biggie didn't just blow up overnight. Like, it took time. Even though Puff Daddy, you know what I'm saying, put him on. But if Biggie didn't listen to Puff and Puff told him, hey, this shit's going to be a hit. This is going to be you. You know what I'm saying? You going to be this person. I drew out your whole storyline. This is going to be you. If Biggie didn't say... Fuck it, man. I'm going to listen to you because you see something in me. He wouldn't have been as big when it came to Juicy and all that shit. You know what I'm saying? He wouldn't have, he wouldn't have had the hood classes where if you, if you hop on that beat, you got to rip it. You know what I'm saying? So if somebody is, is investing their time into you and, you know what I'm saying, giving you cr criticism, like, yo, do this. This will not work for you. It don't look good. If you do this, you got to think about the end, the end of it. You know what I'm saying? You just got to accept it. All right. Maybe this person sees something I don't. Let me listen. Then if this and when it works, if it don't work, are right, you back to square one? All right, it didn't work this way. Let's try it this way. So always be open to like people helping you. And then once you understand that, you gotta stay true to yourself always. Because if you don't, then people are gonna run over you. And in this industry, people like to change their image all the time. You like Drake sings, Drake rap, Drake does everything. Roddy Rich does everything. The baby literally does everything now. So if you listen to what people say, 
you can literally be able to make money off that because people didn't like the baby because all he did was rap the same on every song. And then boom, he dropped the whole album where he was singing. It went platinum, just like that, boom. He dropped the song with Roddy Rich, it went platinum. And then you always gotta be in tune on what's going on. Don't be that artist that don't know about shit. Cause once you don't know about shit, then it's over with. Cause then nobody's gonna like you, you know what I'm saying? So that's my advice to y'all to people. Oh yeah, always put God first, always, Amen always. You put God first, you never gonna be let down. I promise you, I promise you. Oh man, hey listen, uh, Wendell, I wanna thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much for your service. Um, Cause definitely uh, going to the military is definitely not something we're like, oh, you know, I'm bored today. I'll just do this. Um, it definitely takes commitment and heart and especially uh, being a black man, uh, even so much more hard because you looked at one way, not realizing, you know, what you're already doing for this country. And people don't realize that until they either pull you over and see your military ID. So mm -hmm. Thank you so much for that. Um, definitely, folks, if you haven't already, go to SoundCloud, YouTube, Spotify, look up WG Wavy, check out his music. Let him know what you think. You know, uh, um, definitely he's going to love the constructive criticism. And if he likes it, he likes it. If not, hey, he's just going to be at the top and you're just going to have to look from the bottom. So, <laughs> Wendell, <laughs> thank you again so much for being on the show, man. I greatly appreciate having you. Uh -huh. Anytime, man. Thank you, man. I love to come back anytime, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm always going to be. I'm always going to be on the lookout, you know what I'm saying? If y'all want to contact me, y'all can. Um, I'm open to criticism, anything, you know what I'm saying? It's all love. I don't look at it as disrespect. As long as you don't disrespect me, then it's different, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Criticism takes me a long way, you know what I'm saying? Love to support everything. I love to be in contact with people, you know what I'm saying? All that. So you know, if, if you want to make music together, just tap me, you know That's what I'm saying? Cool. So you can get it popping. Let's go. Awesome, awesome. All right, Wendell, thanks again. And uh, for the folks at home, tune in Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. for the RNG Radio Show on FB Live. Or if you just can't get up there early, be sure to check out the uh, replay on YouTube. Wendell, thanks again, man. And salute to you, sir, for all that you do, brother. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Was led on the beat.